Nature's Friend, The Gwen Frostick Story by Lindsay McDivitt, illustrated by Eileen Ryan Ewan. Gwen followed her brothers and sisters everywhere, like a small fawn follows its herd. They roamed the woods and fields near Croswell, their tiny town tucked into the thumb of Michigan. Gwen played and picked wildflowers, but her hands were weakened from an illness as a baby. Her speech was slurred, one small foot dragged, and she fell down often. She bumped her shins, she bruised her knees, she banged her elbows. Gwen doesn't need your help, Helen, Mama called from the porch. Mama knew Gwen could do whatever she put her mind to. I never knew I couldn't do something. Gwen was born in 1906, and at that time, a child with disabilities usually stayed home. But Mama had been a teacher, and she sent Gwen to school and pushed her to learn. In class, Gwen hated the glances and giggles. She hated the whispers, and most of all, she hated that the only things other students seemed to notice were the things that made her different. It made her want to hide like a frightened chipmunk. But instead, Gwen gathered up knowledge like a bird builds a nest. Gwen was bright, but her hands were weak. Her teacher said she would never learn to write. Mama stuffed a drawer with art supplies and encouraged Gwen to use her hands. Gwen pulled out a pencil and pad of paper. Like a new leaf stretching for the sun, she reached for new skills. Her hands worked extra hard. She sketched and scribbled. She doodled and drew. Gwen's grip grew stronger and stronger. Gwen loved, loved learning, but trying to make friends could leave her feeling as prickly as a porcupine. Nature felt like a friend, pulling her out to play. With so much to discover, Gwen didn't have time to feel lonely. Swaying grasses whispered in fields thick with Queen Anne's lace. Tiny ferns unfurled at her feet. Frogs lapped up bugs with long, quick tongues. Gwen breathed it all in. She listened to their message. All things are vital to the universe. All are equal, and at once different. When Gwen was twelve, her family moved to the edge of Detroit. They rode the streetcar into the big city and gazed up at the Woolworth and Ford buildings. Long walks to Gross Isle brought Gwen close to the nature she loved so dearly. She was learning. It was all right to be different, and high school brought new challenges. However, Gwen knew she could do anything she put her mind to, and her hands, now strong and sure, reached for paintbrushes and paint. She was unafraid to tackle tools and skills reserved for boys. Gwen signed up for mechanical drawing, learning to use rulers and compasses to draw machines, and the men squawked like angry blue jays. But in the shot class... But in shot class, her skills with a bandsaw impressed her classmates. Bzzz. In art school, Gwen discovered something new, linoleum, a rubbery material used for floors. Gwen grasped a sharp tool and worked hard to cut out a picture on the surface of the linoleum, carving it slowly and carefully. She rolled ink along the surface of the block and then gently pressed a sheet of paper to it. Her brush, her pencil, and her pen will make this world a better place. Gwen dreamed of life as an artist. But in order to earn enough money to live, she knew she would need to start a business, though that wasn't easy for a woman back then. One day, squaring her small shoulders, Gwen hopped on a bus to collect new art materials. She hauled home some heavy loads of copper and brass. Pounding away in Mama's basement, she hammered the metal into clocks, a sundial, and a fireplace screen decorated with dragons. 
The banging and clanging bounced off the cellar walls. At first, only Gwen's family cheered her creations, but word of her art was spreading across Detroit like wildfire. Clara Ford, wife of automaker Henry Ford, ordered Gwen's copper vases for Fair Lane, their grand estate. In 1939, Gwen was invited to send her art to the World's Fair in New York. She felt like a bird on the first day of spring. Soon war broke out in Europe, and the copper and brass Gwen loved to use disappeared. All metal went to manufacturing equipment for the armies overseas. She wanted to lend a hand. Gwen knew she could do whatever she put her mind to. She marched into the Ford Motor Company and signed up to build bombers. Ford's famous assembly line now produced a plane every hour. Using the mechanical drawing skills she had learned, Gwen designed tools for building the airplanes that were desperately needed for fighting in the, far off, in the war far away. All the day long, whether rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie, brrr, the Riveter. Wednesdays were filled with the roar of machinery and the clang of construction, but in the quiet evening, she still longed to create art. She reached again for linoleum. She brought a printing press and launched Press Craft Papers Stationery Company. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. Gwen joined the small ranks of female business owners. But something was missing from Gwen's city life, and nature called to her like a friend. She pictured the wild north she loved so much. Wind-blown trees, crashing waves, a great blue heron perched at the edge of a pond. She packed up her press and move with her dog, Teddy, to the top of Michigan's mitten. Mm. On her way to Lake Michigan's Betsy Bay, Gwen walked through Frankfurt tiny, Frankfurt's tiny downtown. Her new neighbors definitely noticed Gwen at in her dirty hands and ink-stained dress. They wondered why she and Teddy lingered so long at the swamp. I work with nature because it treats me equally. She walked deep into the wetlands. When Gwen sat quietly with her pad and pencil, as still as a watchful fox, she seemed to hear music. She sensed magic. She witnessed small miracles. Gwen wanted others to see nature as she did, to recognize the value of plants, trees, and animals. So she chipped and chiseled and cut, carving linoleum away until her design stood out. Graceful branches bare of leaves reached for the sky. A lonely doe gazed over a grove of pines. Whiskers twitched below a mischievous black mask. Her linoleum blocks were ready for printing. Gwen ran them through her presses, and soon her new greeting cards were ready to sell. I do a pencil sketch from life, animals, birds, plants, trace it on the block and excise it for the press. Every vein and every leaf is true to life. Gwen's art reminded everyone of nature's beauty and importance at a time when many people had forgotten Lakes, plants, and animals were, were in trouble, threatened by pollution. But like a fresh breeze through the birch trees, Gwen's work whispered truths about meadows and marshes across Michigan and around the world. People listened. Visitors flocked to her shop in the forest. For many years, Gwen worked hard in her studio, surrounded by the woods and the wetlands she loved. She was determined to show others the nature was worth protecting and enjoying. So much depended on it, and Gwen knew she could do whatever she put her mind to. Like ripples on the pond, Gwen's art spread the word. Love this earth.
love its waters, care enough to keep it clear. As long as there are trees and tiny seeds, there will be miracles on earth. <laughs>